I call the meeting to order on uh, January 28, 2013. We'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, this meeting is being video recorded and broadcast. If anyone else is recording this meeting, please identify yourself so that I may make an announcement. So is anybody else videotaping the meeting at all in the crowd? Nope? Okay, very good. Okay, do I have a, uh, a motion to approve tonight's agenda? Yes, so moved. Somebody's videoing. Oh, somebody uh, videotaping? Did I miss that? <laughs> it's all right. You it's may. Okay. It's all okay. Right. You're allowed to. <laughs> okay. you, you're, you're very welcome to. We just have to identify yeah, you. That's all right. You can do that. She's a student. Okay. Very good. All right. So anyways, uh, so Ms. Hart made a uh, motion to approve tonight's agenda. Do I have a second to that? I'll second it. Second by Ms. Peters. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, unanimous. In input from the public on agenda items. Any um, input from the public? No input from the public. Uh, student representative report. Do we have that tonight? Looks like. No, but we have lots of students for later. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So moving on, uh, the Hull Teachers Association representative report. Nobody from the Hull Teachers Association to give a report? Nope. Moving right along, record speed. <laughs> uh, approval of the minutes. We have two sets of minutes. We have um, uh, HDA negotiation set of minutes from December 19, 2012. And we have a regular meeting minutes from uh, January 7, 2013. Do I have a motion? to approve those two sets of minutes? I'll make the motion. Motion by Ms. Peters. Do I have a second? Second by Ms. Lanner. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, unanimous. Okay, we're on to the uh, business items and I'll turn it over to uh, Dr. Terrell. Thank you very much, Mr. Twombly. As you'll recall, last spring we announced an iPad initiative and the sixth grade teachers stepped forward. They rose to the challenge, they embraced it. They put in quite a bit of time on their own. They spent their summer learning how to use the iPad in the classroom. Tonight, Mr. Tony Rivnack, our principal of the middle school, four teachers, Heather Hughes, a science teacher, Lisa Dillon, an English teacher, Kathleen Sullivan, mathematics, and Jennifer Reardon, a reading teacher, all in grade six, are here with their students, Leah Dunn, Victoria Jones, Nathan Froyo, Lily Whalen, Marcus, Marcus, help me. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Chris Avey, is that right? Thank you. Will Merrigan and I believe Brendan O'Donnell will be coming shortly. I'm here to give you a demonstration of what they've been doing with the iPads in our sixth grade. Mr. Rivnack, may I turn it over to you at this point? Thank you. I'm just going to make a couple of quick comments. On June 11th at uh, 1230 in the afternoon, Dr. Tyrrell and I sat down with the sixth grade teachers. I did not know why we were sitting down with them. And when we first said to them that we were presenting them with the option to have the iPad initiative, I have to be honest, I actually expected a lot more questions. But the sixth grade team immediately said, wow. <laughs> yeah, they we even stepped out of the room, Dr. Tyrrell and I stepped out of the room and said, you guys have to talk about this. Make sure this is something you're willing to take on. Make sure this is something that uh, you can dedicate the time and the energy to. Uh, and, and we stepped out of the room and we were only out a minute. They called us back in <laughs> and they said, let's roll, okay? And that is where we are tonight. So uh, this is the beginning, what our teachers have done with our students, what our students have done to embrace this and ultimately how it's affecting what we do in the classroom. Uh, so with that, I turn this over to our students and our teachers for the rest of the presentation. Thank you. Hi, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Heather Hughes, um, the sixth grade science teacher at Memorial Middle School. And first of all, we wanted to say thank you for having us here tonight, the, the school committee. Um, we're really excited to be sharing this um, wonderful educational tool that's enhancing our learning here at Memorial Middle School. So, um, Basically, we called our presentation iPads in the classroom, the last backpack generation. We went to a professional development um, recently on iPads, and the man that spoke, 
very eloquently said, eventually kids really won't be bringing backpacks to school. It could be the kids that are starting kindergarten this year, or it could be years beyond that or years sooner than that. But eventually, everything a child needs is really going to be in some kind of device with books, um, notes, um, anything that they need will be right there at their fingertips. So basically, we're excited to start using this in our classrooms. And we believe that this leads into 21st century skills and 21st century classrooms. So just in case nobody can see it, I'm going to go ahead and read it. Critical thinking and problem solving collaboration across networks and leading by influence, agility and adaptability, initiative and entrepreneurialism, effective oral and written communication, assessing and analyzing information, information excuse me, curiosity and imagination. Those are the skills that we need our kids now to be entering the workforce with. So that's our goal. In science, we are, I'm basically going to show you what the kids do every day when they come into the classroom and the options that they have. I've given them options between using the iPad, for instance, for their agenda books or using a virtual homework app. I'm trying to recognize that some people really do do better pencil to paper and that's how they learn better. And we're talking about different learning styles and how you kind of come to learn what works best for you. For some students, they are still using the paper agendas. For most, they're using the My Homework app now. You have the My Homework app on your iPads. If you can swipe over to the right and type in My Homework, swipe, swipe to the right. Swipe to the right. Swipe your fingers to the right and type in My Homework. And Will's going to come up and show us how he starts his day in science. Swipe so right swipe to the right. I did that. Oh, jeez. You're going to close out? Oh, oh, okay. If you need to close out, you can pinch down. <laughs> pinch down. <laughs> swipe. Okay, so my there homework. There you go. Out. Oh, okay. 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 So, <laughs> Thank you. I was, was going to look at you as a. Uh, my homework app. Yeah, I'll look at I can't even type it right now. Okay. So, are we getting graded on this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, that, so thank now you. you can see yeah, what we dealt with the first weeks that we had the iPad. We were teaching the kids how to do that. So it took a little bit of um, effort. Now, what I asked Will to do is, this is Will Merrigan. Hi. Well, well. <laughs> um, he is here to demonstrate to you what he does at the beginning of class, and I just asked him to mirror over me. We do this a lot in science because we have a smart board in my class. This setup is the info, oh, in focus. focus machine, um, just with a whiteboard, but I have a smart board in my classroom. So I asked him to mirror up, which mirrors exactly what he has on his iPad right now. So he can show you. That, do do well, why don't you go ahead and talk about what you have there. What do you have there, Will? Uh, I got homework for tonight in science, reading, and math. You can add a class manually on here. And he's showing you now how to add a class if you would like to. Okay. And you can go to the plus sign. This. And you add a class manually. Yep. And you can add science. Basket so you don't forget your science homework tonight. Class name, science. Add manually. Add class. And then you can type in basket weaving. That's good. If that's where you're at, that's just fine. Um, okay, so <laughs> he's showing you that he has um, his sections for ELA, reading, math, and science there. And you just can see very easily how they can add in their homeworks. Now there's a way, and um, I'm hoping that we can start doing this, um, that I can get them signed up through it and I can have the, the homework sent to them. But also, I know that X2 is coming around as well, another um, program we have for our grading system, and that's going to be able to show the kids, that's going live, and that's going to be able to show the kids what their homework is as well. Now, this is where he goes to write down his homework, and now he's going to show you um, his virtual notebook. So. He's going to Notability. If you guys want to go to Notability, double-click your home button twice. Or you can pinch, and that will close it out. Sweep to the right, type in Notability, or Oops. go on to Notability. There you go. 
Yeah. Notability. Yeah. So far, oh, I think I want hers. She and it will come up. <laughs> yeah. I think I've got you. I think I have your iPad. Do I? No. No. You guys all have ones for Mr. Runex. We set you guys oh, up. Okay, so good. pinch. Yeah. You just all your fingers. <laughs> pinch. Oh, fabulous. There oh, look you go. at this. This is nice. Okay. Yeah, this is great. And then you can see notability. Um, this is where they have their virtual notebooks set up for science. Um, Will has his binder set up for science for homework, classwork, do now, science vocabulary. He has it right up here on the screen. When he comes into class, he does a do now activity, which is basically like a warm up activity. So he's going to show you one of his do nows and his type two. And you can see in notability, he can type and he can correct it. So he would just click on the typing to get the, the keyboard to come up. Who is typing? OK, right if here. you want your keyboard to come up. How does your, where did your keyboard go? There it is. OK, he has his keyboard on. He has a fancy schmancy cover. <laughs> <laughs> so um, he has his keyboard, and he can click on the pencils or anything to take notes as we go through. Some of the kids has, have stylus, stylus. Mm -hmm. um, pens, but you can use your finger to do that as well, and you see all that. So we're going to go back, and we're going to take you to homework. And homework in our notability, he, you can do homework in the homework section of your science binder. And we used to take pictures of our homework because we didn't have the, um, the scanners, that's what I'm thinking, scanner machines at the school. But now the printers are set up to scan the papers. So I'm going to show you how I'm putting their homework into Edmodo, which is kind of like a okay. student-friendly Facebook page for schools. And he's going to show us how he can go to Edmodo. And he's at Edmodo, in Edmodo now, and he's on sixth grade science. Okay. And you can see how I post my homework there. And he's going to click on a sheet that I scanned into the machine. Are you signed on in Safari? Yep. Okay. Nope. So in order to copy and paste, or if you click on a, in Notability in Safari, like he just did, he can click on Copy to Notability, and then he can pick where in Notability he wants to copy it to. Now it's going to be in Notability at the bottom. Okay? And now if he wanted to answer <coughs> this, he can type in the answer right on the line, or he can write it in in pencil, whichever he prefers. Is that right? Yep. He's Is that right? <laughs> <laughs> Starburst. Okay. So that just gets you a feeling of um, the My Homework app that we all use for agendas. We, um, you can see that some of us use Notability. We use no uh, Edmodo to post things in our different classes. And we're going to thank Will and Yay. Tori. Mirror up, Tori. Mirror off, Will. And Tori is going to share a project that we did. Thank you so much, Dad. Um, Tori is going to share a project that she did in my class. We, um, we're doing a rock cycle project. And normally we do a rock cycle book. And we've been doing it like this a couple years now. And basically, I had the kids doing their, their books. <coughs> and throughout it, we went to the My Pat Backpack, Last Backpack um, Generation class. And I said, you know what? I could probably say to them, this is the information I want. Put it into a rubric for them. And say, show it to me however you want, that you know this information. I don't care if you show it to me just like this, which some kids did choose to do it this way. I don't care if you make a diorama or a trifold board or you make a movie. However you want to do it, Sock Puppets is another app. Do it however you like. Tori and her friend Lexi, do you want me to hand them out or would you like to? Okay, Tori's going to hand out to you guys over here her lyrics to the song that her and Lexi came up with for the rock cycle. Um, they did a video and a song. And so you can sing along if you like. <laughs> um, 
And we can hand out extras to, you know, Will and Nathan, and Zoe's dying to sing, I can see that. <laughs> Never can do it. And um, <laughs> so she's going to play her video for you and show you that she met all of the standards that I was looking for, the work I was looking for, on my rubric just in a different way, which was absolutely fine. So she's just going to mirror that up. You too, but All right, over. so um, <laughs> you can see that a lot of planning went into that. She worked Absolutely. very, they worked very hard on that, and you can see how it connects with the 21st century skills that we're trying to get on. Nice so, job. thank you. So mirroring up means that whatever they have on their iPad, you're projecting onto the screen. Yeah. Okay. So um, if it. you're if you're doing writing in class, like a, if a do now, so I'll I'll say I'll just <coughs> say to a child, mirror up, and they'll mirror up theirs, share so theirs. They have some type of application that allows them to just mirror right onto the smart board quick for yeah. mirrors. Yeah. All of you do on all your iPads. Oh. You could and bump us right off. You could now. bump us off. Okay. No, we couldn't. Yeah. <laughs> How do we do that? No, so you could. How do we do that? We'll, we'll show you. How about at the end? <laughs> True teacher. <laughs> So okay, how to mention the workshop that we went to um, for the last Backpack Generation. We also went to the ACI, to the Arupe Division, and that's really where we got our main start. We watched classrooms in action, we talked to the teachers. They had, they had their program already set and ready to go, so we gained a lot from, the, from going to the BC High um, Arupe Division. Great. But one thing I took away from the last generation was the flipped classroom. And so the the idea of the flipped classroom is that students go home and watch videos about what they're going to learn the next day so that we can spend all our time practicing and talking about it because they've already seen the preview. So a lot of the homework that they do, and Willie's going to come up and, and take you through Edmodo, which you saw also in science. Edmodo is kind of like the school Facebook 
And now she's going to boof me off and mirror up and show hers. And that's the Apple TV right here. This is what's allowing us to that mirror. Double hockey. Yeah. Double hockey. <laughs> and you all have Edmodo on your mm -hmm. iPads as well. And so they, they have assigned classrooms. So they would go into their math section. And the first thing they would see is tonight's homework. So they have two videos to watch. One is an instructional video on uh, properties of numbers. The second one is a rap song that kind of yeah. just gets them listening to the vocabulary a little bit more. So she's going to take you just briefly through the homework tonight. So tomorrow when they come to <laughs> class, I'm not giving the instruction. They're coming with the vocabulary. And we have our discussions about that. And then they move on to their classroom activities. Okay, we'll try the second one. If you click on, you might be able to get it through yours if you click on with that first. Mm -hmm. Anyone able to get to there? Oh my God. Okay. I got it. Okay. Bump her off. <laughs> oh, mirror up. <laughs> How do I do that? Okay. I'll so do it right now. Oh, I got it too. Wipe down here. Oh. Apple TV, and we're going to marry you on. Okay. Wow. Okay. This is where you are. I like this. Okay. Come on. I'm totally trying mine. I'm going to bump her. <laughs> <laughs> She's going to bump her off. <laughs> yours working? Oh, I'm working. Oh, here it goes. Done it. Okay, now who's on? Who's on first? I, I think her, but I'm going to wait. <laughs> if I just go like this, is that bumping? <laughs> exactly. You know what is, while we're waiting for this to come up, this um, Edmodo program, which looks to the kids like Facebook, oh. they, they've had problems with homework also, and so they chat in the chat session, and someone says, I can't get my um, video to work, and someone will respond back to them, I tried this. So it's not only where they get their homework, but they can discuss the homework with each other, and if they're having trouble, I've seen comments like, did anybody get problem 10? And so they share back and forth. Oh, and you can look this. at what they're writing back and forth? And everything, they, they know that everything they share, share is shared with the teachers as well. Um, we'll do it. That's right. But if this isn't going to come up, we can just yeah. skip that. Um, well, hopefully, they'll have better luck when they're doing the homework tonight. <laughs> I don't know why it's not yeah. coming up here. Let me go show me. Yep. Um, so the first video was an instructional on the properties of numbers. They also have an app called Show Me, and Lily's created a Show Me, which they can use to demonstrate their understanding that I would check for, for a quiz or a test grade, and they can share them with each other. So she, you can scroll back and get to the beginning of that one. She did a Show Me, which is it was Haiti, on solving one-step equations. Welcome to Math is Power. This allows them to write and talk and record all at the same time and share with other people. Today we'll be learning about inverse operations with variables. Thanks, Katie. Same number and you minus itself so you get 
now Leah Dunn's going to come up and she's going to talk about the classroom and what she uses Good job, Lily. Uh, notability for in math class. There's another app that they use to show their what they've learned through skits, and it's called uh, Sock Puppets, but it's not working also on mirroring up tonight. So, so uh, there's a lot of creative ways for them to show what they know through the iPads. So we do notes. We took a picture of this on the board, and we use it to help us with homework if we have trouble, so we don't have to bring home our binder. And it shows you a word phrase and the algebraic expressions. And then we did some examples down here. And if you go to math classwork, we do all our classwork in here, like our text pages, and every time we create a new note and make a new text page. So on this one, I did graphs and stuff to show the answers of x. And yes. So in the beginning of when we first got these iPads, the kids were walking around with all their binders and their books, and then the iPad on top. And it was, mm -hmm. and so we've slowly eliminated the use of binders and. I mean, eventually all our textbooks would, would be on there as well, and, and they'll just be carrying around on an iPad. So mm -hmm. the, we learned a lot. This part we all got, we got from the BC High group and just managing it in the classroom. And so it's been great, and they've really been helpful. The kids have taught us a lot as well. <laughs> so one day um, we, were, we were doing an activity, and I saw a girl. She had a, a multiplication chart on her iPad and her notes, and I said, how'd you do that? And so she got up and showed everybody. We're learning just as much as they're learning from us through the iPad, so it's been really nice. It's good. Thank you. Yeah, wonderful. Thank you. Hello. I'm Jen Reardon, the reading teacher. I'm just going to show you a little bit about what we do with the iPad in reading. If I. So it, oh, it's not, it's not mirroring up. We came in earlier and everything was <laughs> 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 All right, there we go. All right, so in reading, um, some of the apps that we use are Enigma, which I'm going to have um, Lily come up and show Enigma in Quickie. Um, and then Edmodo, Notability, and iBooks are up there for reading. And we've seen some of that, so I'll just show you how we do that in reading also. So I'm going to have Lily mirror up to show you Enigma. And Enigma is a QR code reader. And you probably, I don't know, you might use QR codes around town. Mm -hmm. You can go through the windows and get mm -hmm. different coupons. Well, mm -hmm. I can create, we can create the QR codes, and they will take the student directly to a website and link up. So in reading, a lot of the time, what I want them to do is to build background information before we start reading. So for example, one story we read called The Bracelet was set in a Japanese American internment camp. So to help build background, I went and found some websites that would be helpful to the kids to learn a little bit more about the setting, and then created the QR code, and then if they scan the QR code, it takes them right to that website, and then they can read about it there instead of you know, wasting the time typing everything in. Um, so a lot of times they use the QR codes to take them directly to a website to get some background information. Um, for this, we actually few different websites about the Japanese American internment camps and they took notes um, and then they were able to use their notes to turn it into a writing, um, an example of writing to tell more about the living conditions in the internment camps from the point of view of a child who would have been living in them. Um, so that's the QR codes with Enigma. And then with Quickie, you go to Quickie Lily. Quickie's pretty student friendly and so this is just another site that they can go to to get some additional information about a topic. Um, for example, saltwater crocodiles were mentioned. So with Quickie you can type in a topic and they'll get information, lots of pictures which they really like. So if they're just seeing something um, like the caraway or the bilby when we were studying Australia, using Quickie they can uh, bring up images so they can have pictures in their mind of what these animals actually look like, learn more about it here um, for kids who you know have trouble 
with the reading and the comprehension, they can listen to it also. So Quickie's really nice to gather information from. Lily also has on here a collection of iBooks there that she can go to and then you know during the school day at home she can go right to her iBook so a lot of the students have taken advantage of that also all right thanks Lily Thank you. and then we have Leah come up and mirror up just to take a look at the Edmodo the reading site with Edmodo So, what's your talk? Um, we'll go to Ed, this is go it, this to is Edmodo. It's edmodo.com. Edmodo.com. Right, yeah, because you press that open. How do, can we get back to how you got that? Oh yeah, sure. Here, I'll just do it again. So you should be able to see on your Edmodo site too, um, it's sixth grade reading on the left hand side. So the kids have their username and password and then they're able to join our different classes to have access to different information. Yep, go right there. Okay, so, and, and then you go down and she puts articles in there. So Wanna show them the poll from, oh, yeah. oh, that's like, oh no, never mind. All right, so right here, um, if you can see, there's different articles um, and different worksheets that we're able to scan through our copy machines now at the middle school. And then I can post them to Edmodo. The kids can open them up in Notability. So, open Notability, then you create new note. So this was an article that we looked at today in reading class about child labor. And so it was hard called at Hard at Work. And then if you, can you go to the one that we actually so, worked with today? Um, the reading. So we worked on... Yep, 9.35. So you can see this one from today is a little bit more marked up. So they, we were talking about the features of informational texts, and so they're able to go up and use the highlighters in different color highlighters. Can you show them how we can pick the different highlighters? So you pick that, and then there's different colors and sizes you can choose. So then you can highlight the things that are important. So as we were talking about different features today, we were highlighting them in different colors to really pick them out. And then we're also using the highlighters as they're going back to find supporting evidence. You want to show them um, the leopard's noisy drum? Is that sure. from this week? Should be Last in Last week. So the general list. Oh, it's here. It's, then you go down. So. so this was a selection that we had in class. You want to explain to them what we? So we had questions at the bottom that we had to do. Said Mrs. Reardon made us highlight all the right answers. Made us, huh? <laughs> <laughs> made us highlight she all. Asked you to. <laughs> we highlighted all the right answers and put what number they were. So yeah. What number question they oh. went back to, um, just to prove that it was the best answer. So they were able to go back and highlight their evidence for the best answer to the questions, and then we went through that. Um, so that is showing Edmodo to Notability, which they were also doing in science. Um, and then Lily, um, Leah also has a video. Want to get to the video? Um, one of the tasks that we are working now. Movie is now playing on Apple. They do love to use the video to show what they know and to you know to play around with. So we read the Watsons go to Birmingham, and they were given different scenarios with different characters and they came up with scripts and conversations that they thought these characters might have with each other about events that happened in the book. So they had to take the information that was in the book. what we 
were reading in yeah. class. Well, you have to, you go back to Edmodo for a minute. Oh, yeah. I just remembered another feature in Edmode. If you go to the math section. I have a question, too. There's a, a poll option where you could use for, in, I, I'm, but tonight they're doing it for homework where they're going to answer a question. So it gives me an idea of who here. remembers what they just learned. In class, it can be the um. beginning of the class lesson. It can be their ticket out to answer a quick poll. She'll just show you what she's so on the right hand side it says like recent activity um, so and so and 17 others turned in prop these numbers so they do their homework and then they turn it in and then you guys review it on your iPads to see what they did oh okay mm -hmm. and the as a beginning of the class activity too, before we read a selection sometimes, just a question to get their, um, you know, to get their brain going, a little warm up activity, either activating prior knowledge or making predictions. There's polls and things for on mm -hmm. um, Edmodo also. Right, it just look, engages them, Here's motivates them on there. There's, yep, that's ours for today. They had a little, a little vote for a question that was related to the reading selection that we had. Can I ask what's the answer to that question? 12. Oh, I was hoping not. you. <laughs> Her. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we, we know you know. <laughs> 12. <laughs> Good answer. 50% of them actually guessed 12 today out of the whole grade. Guess the <laughs> answer. All right. That's it's a long day. We're reading. Yeah. And Thank you. How many hours do you have to show you? <laughs> Pages, and if you want to look at pages, it's on. I think it's on these iPads. I don't see and it. pages. It, what I it is, it's a word <laughs> processing back. app. And for an English teacher, it's really a dream come true. Okay. <laughs> there there we Thank go. you. <laughs> so so free update is, available? No. Yeah, it's it's a word processor basically, and so now all the the writing that the kids do is all typed. Everything's typed, and. It, for sixth graders in the past where we had to hand write a six, a six or a five paragraph essay, edit it, and then rewrite it, it's grueling. It's, it's so hard to get them to do it. And the motivation, being able to type everything is just skyrocketed. I mean, I'm getting better work, I'm getting more work, they like it better, mm -hmm. and instead of having to rewrite an entire five paragraphs, they can just edit, and they can edit, which is what's done in college and, and what's done in the real world. So Lily was gonna show us an essay that she did on <laughs> pages. And so we're using John Collins, so those are the FCAs at the top. But if you notice, we're doing, we're now doing citation. Um, we're do what's done in college, where you, d you have a work cited page, you have citations. Um, on the, in the new Common Core, there's actually nine frameworks that directly address um, technology and using the internet. And so to have it right there with them at all times is, has just been incredible. Um, there, we use the internet a lot to do research. Um, if you want to show, yeah, so that looks good. And this one in particular is awesome because this in science where Tori showed you the the different types of rocks and she did the song well we did a research paper on the different types of rocks so it's it's cross-curricular it makes cross-curricular stuff like just great just so easy and so the stuff um, we learned about they were learning about volcanoes in science and we did a research paper on volcanoes um, they they're learning topographic maps in Yosemite Park in science and we did a research paper on Yosemite <laughs> Park so it's, um, like I said, Pages is fabulous. And just having the internet right there is, um, again, the, the Common Core directly says, 
keyboarding skills, using the internet, using uh, media and oral presentations. So everything that's on the Common Core is right here at their fingertips. Thank you very much. And, okay. and another part of our frameworks is multimedia presentations. So Marcus is going to show us a presentation that he did. <laughs> And one of the things that, that is awesome is that Marcus actually found this app on his own. It wasn't one that was on his iPad. And I said, take your information. Let's see. Pause one moment. Why is it not? I need help. There we So I said, take your information about adjectives that you took in your notes and present it. Show me what you learned about adjectives. And Marcus went and found his own app. This particular one, I think, cost money. It was $5. It was $5. So they didn't have, they, they could use any app they wanted. Um, he found this one, and this was his, his presentation on adjectives. There's some different apps. There's StoryKit. There's Sock Puppets. There's lots of different apps for all presentations. Yeah. Wonderful. And I know we're running. No, that's fine. No, 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 this is no, great. Good. Good. Okay. okay. So okay. We, um, <laughs> we we also, as you know, we we all teach social studies as well. Um, and this app that we're showing you. Oops, I forgot to mirror up. Sorry. This app that we're showing you the presentation on is called Keynote. They've used that in social Keynote. studies as well. Um, we use Google Keynote. Earth in Keynote. social studies. Keynote. Um, Keynote. Keynote. And we can go on virtual field trips. So if you want to go on Google Earth, you should have them on. So if you sweep to the right and type in Google Earth. Oh, we're going to Google Earth. Right? Yeah, sure. I've got Google, Google, Google Earth. Earth on my own here. Google Earth. Okay. And um yeah, but I don't have all that stuff. <coughs> yeah. Okay. I will I'll get on it. I'm just I'm just heading She's around. Difficult. The, no, I'm doing this on purpose. I'm I'm discovering this. <laughs> <laughs> right. You're getting, getting an app. No, that's okay. You're getting that's an okay. app. Go to Google Somebody Earth. Dragging us down. <laughs> so um right, I I teach Africa right now in social studies, so we can okay. Go from, we can show them how we're at 180 Main Street Hall, and it will zoom right in. And they can see, you know, really the world is getting to be a smaller and smaller place. And here's Hull, Massachusetts, and this is where you are right now. You're at the high school. And then you can type in Africa. So if you type in 180, Main Street, Hull, Mass. It will zoom right into Hull, Mass. And then from there, you can type in Africa. And search. And it will show you. It will zoom right out 
and bring you to Africa. And when you go, you can go on basically a virtual field trip. So when you go to a place, you can zoom in. And I think it's thinking um, right now, but you can zoom in and very often they have um, little spots that you can click on that will take you to different museums, talk about um, different natural features of the area. It's just not showing up because it's just taking too long to think about it. But um, so we use Google Earth and Nathan Furio is gonna come up and show us how he uses um, Cranberry, which is a vocabulary app. Um, so you're gonna bump me out, mirror up. Cranberry, it should be on yours as well. It's called Cram, C-R-A-M, Cranberry. So we can enter our, we call them geoterms for social studies. They're pretty much just um, important words that we learn about in each chapter. And we write them in here and we can study them by matching up each thing like this. Oh yeah. And then it'll keep quizzing you like that. And you can just study them like flashcards. So you would say the definition and then read that and if you got it correct hit correct and then do that for all of them <coughs> so you could use that in any subject you're yeah studying. yeah right and cards. they match up all the cards so and he also wanted to show you um how he uses notability in social studies what did you want to show them in social studies i also write down my geoterms in here and put pictures next to them and so he has a picture dictionary of his vocabulary words. Just a bunch of geoterms. Can you show your map? Do we have your map still? Well, and when he was in my, we switch every five weeks, and when he's in Europe and Russia, Every day they do a map with the cat, this first aid identified the country, and Nathan and a couple of kids came up with a way. I hadn't even thought about it, but they do it on paper, and he said, we can do this on our iPads, and he downloaded a map from the internet, a blank map, and he, they did a lot with that. Do so, you have the one where you used to write on it? I actually might have learned geography if I used this. What is the 
fire have to do with the hurricane? It just looks good. <laughs> 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 it's a good transition. Yeah. Fire, no hurricane. <laughs> So in this, they, they were assigned a chapter about hurricanes, and then they had to summarize each section of, of, the, of the chapter, and they turned into a slideshow. We start down this one. Uh, oh, do you have any questions? Sure. Um, I was wondering, it, it seems, uh, well, first, thank you for coming in and doing thank this you. very thorough yeah, thank presentation. Thank you. Very, excellent. very enlightening. Uh, obviously, I don't have a sixth grader, so I, I don't see it firsthand. So I, I greatly appreciate everyone's uh, participation. But just uh, trying to think through, it seems like everybody's kind of customized theirs a little bit. Um, and then when you get into iBooks, you're obviously putting, you know, specific apps or books that you've gotten on here. Are we anticipating um, these staying with the individual students as they progress through the school system, or, or how is that going to work? Um, yeah, Mr. No. Ripnack, do you want to take that? It, or, it oh, really sorry. doesn't matter because it's based on their iTunes account, not the device in front of them. So even if um, a hurricane came through and mixed them all up, they could pick up any one, log into their iTunes account, and all of their stuff would download back to it. Does that answer your question? Sure. Okay. And um, I also wonder, is there, obviously this program just started, uh, but is there any sort of uh, thought about any sort of metrics to kind of see or try to understand uh, the effectiveness of this as opposed to the old paper and books method to see, just trying to think through a way to actually demonstrate uh, how the learning is improved? Um, from research? Or from our own. I know, I know kind of what you're asking. Um, it's hard to compare like the last year of sixth graders to this year of sixth graders. Right. But um, has technology, do you think, um, help them with understanding? Like you only had to teach the concept one time. You know, it's, it's apples and oranges, but I know that's basically what you're I asking. I can definitely say, and I'm sure Ms. Dillon can speak to this too, the, the products with their writing especially is far more greater they're doing more they're writing better the motivation, um, the motivation is huge um, I've seen kids that went from not doing homework to doing homework because they just want to be able they just want to pick up their iPads and do it um, or if they're forgetful with um, bringing their sheets home they know they can go into Edmodo and the sheets there they don't just come in and say I forgot the sheet oh I can I can get it from here now and I can do it so um, they're problem solving more with things like that. Um, Me too. Like I said, I have eight Common Core frameworks that directly address technology. And so if I had to take the kids up to the computer lab and, and get, you know, get them all signed onto the computers, and I just wouldn't be able to spend as much time on technology. Mm. Um, and they wouldn't do as much keyboarding. They would, you know, it's just the, the time that you can spend on it when you don't have to go up to the computer lab is, is really amazing. I think it also creates an independent learner. Um, they know if they don't know the answer, they can find it. And if someone's working on a math problem, they forgot how to divide decimals, they can go to Khan Academy and do it quick. They don't need to seek someone out. They can do it on their own. They have everything they need to find an answer to what they're looking for and watch it over and over again. If they didn't get it the first time, they can go look at it again. I was observing Miss Dillon's class um, about two weeks ago, and we were talking about their writing production, and she had said to me, kids that were struggling to write a sentence are now pumping out paragraphs without blinking. <coughs> kids that were struggling to write a paragraph are now pumping out pages without thinking. And kids that were putting out pages are now able to just take that to the next level because they're able to edit so much easier. Uh, they're able to incorporate outside resources so much easier. So is a lot of it anecdotal from our point right now certainly uh, i think as time goes on we're going to see the the proof and you all i've also had kids like if they have a moment if they finish their work they go, can i go can i write my story from <laughs> ela i'm writing a, a story for her, or um they'll say can i can i look at one of my books and I mean, it takes some monitoring from us, obviously. Um, we have to make sure that we're not on games. And that was a lot of um, practice on how to use the iPads at the beginning was um, basically, what do I say every day that you do when you come into school? 
You what? Clear your history from your iPad. So you go in and you log off everything that doesn't have to do with school. And this is a tool for school. And really, we log off anything each class. If you're not using it, you are allowed to log back into it for the next class because it not only drains the battery, but if you get caught on a game or something, it could get you in trouble <laughs> for not being on the right thing. Unless, of course, it's a math game. Unless it's a math game or a science game or something studies. like that or a social studies game, right. <laughs> math versus zombies. <laughs> Go there. It's good. <laughs> So, but I also want to say that all the technology that we have that works together has really been key. Um, the iPads with the Apple TV, with the smart boards, um, all of that really is intricate to each other and working together um, and making something that's truly amazing in the classroom. Not something that I ever thought I would see. <laughs> well, it took a lot of work. Um, on the part of each of the teachers and Mr. Rivnack, in addition to the students. But thank I thank you. you for all the hard work. Oh, thank you very much. So you have any questions um, or comments? Just, just a quick, I mean, I think this is fabulous. And I think for like executive functioning, just to keep organized, I think this would be awesome. Um, but for um, technology, do they break often? Do you have a difficult time logging on, getting frustrated, any of that kind of? No. No. Nope. Does, do any of you want to answer that for? No. I pretty much see if they get frustrated, all all they do is if somebody was absent or if somebody's struggling, hey, can you show him that? Can you show them? They're great at helping each other. They're pairing up like no. crazy. Yeah. They just yeah. jump over and say, <laughs> you know, let me help you out. They're born and with this knowledge. Mm -hmm. yeah. well, they're not afraid of oh, they could be. Yeah. Oh, they've been video chatting from home. Video chat for people at oh, that's good. Oh, that's Skype good. Chat. Wow. From Skype? Um, I'm just uh, curious. FaceTime. Face FaceTime. Face OK. Google. Great idea. Uh, I'll just add a couple comments. Uh, I think this was fantastic. Thanks a lot to all the uh, teachers. Great job. And um, uh, Tony, great job on getting everybody together and bringing everybody here. I know I was kind of being a pain and kept on asking all the time, but I really appreciate it. It was a great presentation. I got one question though for not to put the parents on um, on the spot, but do the parents have any comments? Or have, it, or have they noticed anything? Or increased reading. Increased reading. Yeah. Okay. Any other comments from the parents? In writing. And when he said chatting, yeah. and it's not just chatting, just yeah. to chat and chatting about homework too. Oh, that's nice, Mr. Jones. And then uh, one other comment. I think um, uh, Eric kind of hit on it, but. Um, we talked about the Khan Academy. If you go onto YouTube, you can actually watch, uh, I think the 60 Minutes uh, had a thing on Khan yeah. Academy. And it's not just uh, anecdotal. I mean, it's really, I mean, they showed actually uh, students out in California who lived in like really urban settings and how they improved their scores. So if you go onto YouTube and um, look for Khan Academy 60 Minutes, there's a whole presentation on that. It's really impressive. So, but anyways, great job, all the students. Appreciate you coming in here. I know it's uh, a little bit late, 8 o'clock. But uh, fantastic job, Marianne. I'm just imagining what it's like in your classrooms. I, I, it's not a quiet classroom. It, there's a lot of interaction going on. And I, you know, I look at it from the special ed teacher perspective. And this is how many ways can you bring this information to your students? I, I'm, I'm just in love with this whole program. Thank you so much, because I know, I know this was a tremendous amount of work that you all put in. So just bravo to, and yay. Just to give you an idea of what a classroom is like in some instances, I happened to be walking through uh, Ms. Sullivan's classroom yesterday. Smart board was on. Student at the smart board controlling the smart board, labeling something about geography, so it was a history lesson or their history. Um, uh, kids were all on their iPads. She was working with two students in a corner of the classroom. I didn't, wasn't able to see why, but then there was a student out in the hallway watching something on Khan Academy that they'd either missed from before or something. So, you know, three or four distinct things going on all at the same time. Every now and then, Ms. Sullivan would just pop her head up, say, okay, Johnny, uh, you did uh, Europe, now somebody come up and do Africa, next person come up, next map on the smart board, and going and going and going and going. Mm -hmm. so you mentioned students with special needs, and an app we didn't talk about was Dragon Dictation, where it is on the iPads, and the students can talk, and it will type. Good, 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 good. And that's a free app, too. Yeah, that's, yeah. Oh, that's wonderful. 
Mr. Evnick, what, I mean, I think our goal, I would hope our goal after watching this is to try to, you know, move these along and then purchase them for the, the incoming sixth graders and kind of move it up the system. How will you make sure that the, the, the seventh grade teachers are given the support that these guys had and the eighth grade teachers and is there common planning time? Do you have an expectation of sending them maybe back to BC High, that group, or? Yeah, we've, we've um, we actually have a couple of iPads right now that I'm going to be able to distribute to the, um, the seventh grade teachers. One of the things that had originally happened with the iPad program is that we were going to handle the Apple Care through the school department. Uh, but what would happen is the students would have to turn in their iPad to us. We would give them another one, and then we were down an iPad that we had available to us. What we found out that we didn't know up front is that the students themselves can take their iPad to the Apple Care just by the serial number that's engraved in the back. Don't even try and read it. Uh, it's registered as having Apple Care, and they can just turn it over. Um, pay the, the $49 fee and get another one back right away. So now I don't have to have that extra set in my office to constantly be switching in and out with people. So we actually have a couple we can start passing out to the seventh grade teachers. Um, the last seminar that they went to, I can't remember the name of it right now. The last backpack generation. The last backpack generation. Um, they said that, that was probably the best seminar that they went to. Um, going to BC High was, uh, um, giving us a lot of ideas of things that we can do. But BCI is a very different model than, than how we do it. So it gave us ideas of, of, of things we can do in the classroom, but we are definitely a, di a different, um, we're just a different model as to how we're doing it as versus as how they're doing it. That's, that's all there is to it. I mean, it actually, I think ours is a little bit better because we're actually, um, we're teaching the kids more about the device, uh, whereas BC High is basically saying, here's what you need to, to, to do, uh, bring it to us and be prepared. And if you're not, you know, you're kind of, you're, you're short, you know. Um, so we're actually teaching a little bit more about the device itself. Um, there was another part to your question that I'm not sure I answered. I just want to make sure if they were going to have opportunities to go to professional development. Yep. And it sounds like the kids actually might be teaching the second grade teachers on how to handle it. They'll come yeah. in it all on. Yeah. So yeah. they'll, yeah. Right. Yeah, and the kids will know it and they'll teach the teachers as well. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if anything, it'll be about trying to stay ahead of the kids. Right. <laughs> right. Can I ask, how are they holding up physically? Uh, you mentioned having to take, turn them in. Or you know, when, when we first handed them out, we had a lot of breakage. We were losing two a week. Um, uh, so the first um, five weeks, we lost 10. Um, in the last six week, weeks, we've lost three. So I think it's taken kids a little bit of a time to get to understand uh, what they can and cannot do or how they can and cannot be used. Um, uh, but even if we continued losing two a week, over the two-year term of the iPad project, uh, we would still have enough swap-outs um, as long as it wasn't the same student breaking time over and over again. <laughs> and, I, and I must say that it's not always the student. Somebody's looking at me right now. So it's not always the students <laughs> that break the iPads. Oh. I, don't, I don't know. Um, every now and then, somebody else has to take credit for that. We've had a couple instances. I don't know why, who, or how, but we're parents of broken iPads. Um, and, uh, and you know, no teachers, harm, no foul. Or teachers. Or teachers. Or teachers. Yeah, right, right. And, oh, and but again, the Apple Care has been fantastic. And mine broke right in front of Miss Keene. Yeah, she's she <laughs> not her lap and she puts it in she she right off. Yeah. Right the and, and the Apple Care takes care of the drops, and we have not had a single iPad that's been stolen. We have not had, had a single iPad that's been mi misplaced. So the students have been very, very responsible. The, the, the other thing that I was personally worried about is we've not had one complaint from the community or parents about any misuse either. Nope. Good. That's good. No, they've been Excellent. very responsible. <coughs> we're going to have to bring this to class in a binder and in an agenda book. I'll tell you that right now. They, they want this with they them all the time. Mm -hmm. They never right. forget it. Right. <laughs> so are you printing out homework, or how are you correcting well, we homework? Have, um, we have wireless printers. Each of us has a wireless okay. printer. It's fabulous. And they're able to, whatever room they're in, or actually from Lisa's room, they can print something off of my printer. If hers is busy, it's, it's awesome. I bought my daughter a wireless printer. <laughs> <laughs> they were, um, so they're able to print out and give us work, or email it also. But most of their work is just right done on the iPad. I was going to ask, paper. yeah. Mm -hmm. So then do yeah. you look at it on the iPad, what they've done mm -hmm. for the work? Okay. They'll come so up you correct with it, it and okay. facing me, yep. and I'll look through it and look, correct look. it right on the spot. So it's They great. can't email them to you, am I correct? Yes. yes. They and can. They've emailed papers. If they have their own emails. 
account. Not every child does. And not all the children are 12 years old. Right, right. right. The children may not have an email account until they're 12 years old. That's part of the problem with sixth grade. Oh, okay. And, and the teachers their parents have, to have their parents. Like, Will emailed his keynote to Ms. Willen. To a parent's account? To a parent's account. And the teachers have to use Gmail accounts, right? You guys set up your own Gmail accounts because right now uh, we have a very old Microsoft Exchange server. Um, it's um, 10 or 11 years old now, and it would be a significant amount of money to upgrade that. Uh, so we have to use a G, G well, they're free. It doesn't cost us anything, right. but it's just, a, it's just an additional step. He'll be turning 12 soon enough. <laughs> soon enough. And we're even looking for solutions to that as well to see if there's a way that we can do that. Um, we've been doing some research with um, my mind just went blank. The, um, Google Docs. Google Docs. Google, Google, Google Docs. Docs same, same, it's not Google right. Docs, but it's the same kind of thing. Google Docs. And even through our own mail that's, server, there's a way that we can do it for that as well. We're trying to investigate that as well. Oh, G it's through Gmail. It's, a G it's Gmail, which is Google Docs. Yeah, right. Yep. Mr. Rivnack, are, are uh, the sixth grade and the seventh grade teams starting to work together to get the teachers prepared for next year? We haven't started that yet, no, but we will be looking at doing that, yes. It's, we only got. The, the first round of iPads that were broken, we, this was one of the reasons why it's better for the student to go and take it out. So back in November, we just got those back from Apple. Oh, wow. So a, a student can walk into an Apple store, hand theirs in, and be given another one immediately. Whereas we had to um, fill out paperwork, go through the town purchase order process, mail it off, get repackaged up there, and then ship back to us. So it literally took three or four weeks for all of that to get done. And we just got the iPads back. Okay. Mm -hmm. A week ago. Good. Hmm. Really good. Any other questions by anybody? So go ahead. Tori. Oh. Tori's going to ask us a question. <laughs> <laughs> Next year, when we're in seventh grade, are we going to do what we did this year and wait to get the iPads, or are we going to get them back? Like I don't want to make any promises. It is my hope that you will actually be able to have them before school or on the first day of school. The, the, the reason we held them this year was simply because we were learning about them as well. Good question. That that's a real good question. <laughs> you want to be ready. All right. Any other questions? So power up. Great, great job. Oh, Thanks. No, oh, no, another no, question no, by one. Lily. 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 <laughs> the plan is that you will have them for sixth, seventh, and eighth grade and move on beyond there. But I, I just, I can't make guarantees right now. <laughs> we that think so, plan. Lily. Okay. Yeah. We think so. Yeah. But no promise. We're trying. Yeah, that's Oh, look at that. She's getting these right back. Your iPads by holding. Power button down, and then it will slide to power off. This is mine. I okay. promise. Nice I, I, I have to take care. Do you have it? Yeah. The I, power button. Okay. Anybody else? No. Any I, students have any more questions? Yeah. <laughs> I think we all these yeah. students. Yeah. A big round Great of job. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> it's up to you. Lots of singers. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Um, you know how we're changing to Thank you. See you later. Thank you. Thanks. Nice job, Tori. Yeah, nice Everybody job, everyone. Computer, so want to take a recess? Yeah, why don't we take a uh, one minute, couple minute recess? Two minute, okay. Two minute recess. Good job, boys and girls. Thanks, guys. Good job, guys.
Dr. Terrell, next on our agenda, like adult education update from Barbara Stanley. So we're going to a different end of the spectrum. <laughs> <laughs> you probably need an iPad Last class year, to add. <laughs> you probably have an iPad class yeah. now, I think. <laughs> Last year, um, I met with Barbara Stanley and asked her if she would use every bit of creativity she had and put together an adult education program on a pilot basis for the adults of the Hull community. And we were extremely pleased with the course offerings and the turnout, the interest, and it was a way that the Hull Public Schools were able to give back to the community. And there's an adage, Barbara, if you don't want a job, don't do it so well. <laughs> so, <laughs> so Barbara did a fabulous job, and so I've asked her to continue on in that and to come tonight and tell us about the offerings for this spring. Barbara Stanley, who uh, actually works in the school district in many capacities. Now, uh, tonight you're here as the adult education chair coordinator. She also runs kids care for us. Well, this, you're right, sorry, yep, yeah, there you go. Here's the agenda. And uh, when we plan, we keep in mind, you know, our biggest goal is to attract as many residents as we can. We want classes to be interesting and very convenient and fun and also affordable. Uh, as far, in the fall, we offered the same classes that were available in the spring, which I had, we had, been here I had been here before to discuss. The students experience the same dedication from the instructors, and we feel very fortunate. Um, uh, we feel very fortunate that uh, Paul Y. Baraki, uh, who teaches dance, um, is part of the program along with instructor Zoltan Zabo, Chef Paula Kaufman, um, they're just very dedicated to the program and we're very fortunate to have them. An additional class was added this past fall, which was offered by Jen Oliveri and Lisa Chenette, and it was boot camp. This gave us the opportunity to use the high school, along with the weight room and the gym. And that class was very popular and was successful, and several residents registered for it. So that went very well. Um, here are some pictures. Badminton, by the way, has become very competitive. I love this dance group. I think Maggie can attest to this. They really have become a very tight group. They're going out in February to uh, practice some of the de dances they've learned. They're going to head out to the, did you say the? They're off to just, yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh! Yeah, so the, the 12 <laughs> members of the dance class? And the instructor and his girlfriend. There's quite a few that are coming. So, um, the cooking class, as you can see, is actively engaged. And what I love when I go in there to make sure they're all set up properly, right. people are bringing in dips. They're bringing in different recipes to share with other students or with other classmates. I want, you know, they just share their own recipes along with, as you can see, how dedicated um, Paula is and how involved those students are. So it really is great to see. Um, as far as the results. Um, the classes are filled to capacity, and what we're really pleased to see is that uh, the, the spring class for, for instance, dance, we had 12 enrolled. This past fall, we had 20. Um, as far as badminton, it still has a strong showing, and what's nice is the people that are participating are asking other people in the community to come and enroll, because they, they'd like to see it even get bigger, so they, it's fun to see that. Um, the cooking class is still strong and steady. Um, what is interesting with the cooking class, you can only have so many people there because of the size and whatever. But as I had said earlier, they're sharing, they share the recipes with each other. They follow with what um, Paula has to offer. So, I mean, it's, it's just a wonderful program. Um, and uh, as far as the boot camp, it's offered, it's a workout that's offered for all ages. So they modify for the older, you know, person or the, you know, I heard they don't modify too much. <laughs> they did. Okay. I'm going the wrong way. The results. Okay. 
Um, what's next? Okay, the winter and the spring will offer the same classes except for beginner's dance because they want to step it up a notch and they're ready to move <laughs> on to intermediate classes. So we'll be offering the intermediate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, we will also be offering a yoga class. So that is something additional. And the, um, what we're continuing to do is to reach out to the community and see what their interests are. And we're hoping this upcoming fall to maybe even offer a language class. So there we go. Oh, nice. So we're pleased. I mean, there's a lot. Very good. OK. OK, starting on my left, Ms. Peters, uh, do you have any uh, questions? Uh, I'm assuming that this is financially self-sustaining. Yes. So it has been. Great. Okay, Ms. Hart. Oh, that's it. <laughs> I'm just thinking about the uh, dance, the dance classes going professional and going into competitions. You think yeah, that'll happen? I mean, the, cl the classes keep getting longer and longer. That's why. Like <laughs> <it>. <laughs> Could you demonstrate? No. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. <laughs> you sound like fun. It, it looks like a lot of fun. I mean, I see them. Hey, nice job. Keep up the good work. Okay, thank Appreciate you. Yeah, no, I yeah. think it's great. Yeah. Skip two. Michelle, no, that, that's okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank we have you great facilities. It's great that we are opening up for the community. and It's, it's yeah. actually yep. wonderful. And another thing I forgot to add was I'm now getting phone calls before the literature has, ever, has been released. So they're <laughs> enthusiastic. They want to see it all come back. And when is it starting up again? So thank you very nice. much, thank Barbara. You, thank you. Uh, the next item on the agenda is the school calendar. We spoke about this at the last meeting. And um, tonight, based on uh, further consideration and also reviewing the interest of the, uh, what the respondents to our poll said, uh, I'm recommending to you that we begin school before Labor Day and um, hold school on January 2nd and January 3rd. Uh, with the students for, excuse me, the staff, let me go back to before Labor Day, the staff first day on August 26th, the students first day on August 28th, there would be no school that Friday, and um, I think we should discuss uh, December 23rd. Okay, opening up the discussion, does anybody have any comments about um, the calendar, uh, specifically about December 23rd, whether we should have school or not? Um, I have a question about the survey monkey. Did we get, I mean, I saw it shared on Facebook and. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I did. Right. But I just, it didn't have a total amount of, um, did it have a total amount of votes? I, I'd say about 88 respondents. Oh. Okay. I'm just adding the yeses and nos. Right. Oh, I thought percentage, it was percentage. So. This is, okay. Yeah, that's, that's why I wasn't adding it. I could have figured that out. Oops. <laughs> uh, Eric, do you have any uh, questions or comments on? Uh, no, I, I appreciate you, Maggie, for putting out the survey. Um, you know, the, the numbers kind of correlate with uh, uh, people that I spoke with, uh, so I, I, I kind of wanted to, to just take a survey of the crowd, and they they're pretty clear. They mm -hmm. want to go back to school before Labor Day. It's always good to check back in. Yeah. yeah. The Although I have to say, my wife wants it after, but she's just <laughs> going to lose this one. <laughs> now the numbers correlate with my recommendation, except uh, on December 23rd. Does it significantly no. Uh, right. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and I will say that I think it uh, would be educationally sound to have school on December 23rd. That's not the most rigorous day academically. It's a nice day for children. It's the day that we have the Polar Express program at the Jacobs School. And I think a day of school at, at, uh, during the cold winter months is worth more than a day of school in June. So when would you do the uh, Polar Express if you don't no, do it? They can just do it the Friday before. Yeah. The Friday yeah. before. Uh. And, and I realize that um, the committee feels otherwise, so. Um. I just want I heard from a former school committee member, um, Mrs. Kathy Bowes, who was extremely vocal about going back before Labor Day. <laughs> she was on the committee. She felt that the committee had worked really hard to kind of move that date before Labor Day. So she would like her, she wanted her concerns <laughs> noted, and I told her I would do that. So <laughs> please enter that into the record. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome, Mrs. Bowes. <laughs> Any other? Yeah, Marian, do you have any uh, questions or comments on it? Um, the only thing about the 23rd, it's the cost, the cost savings we, to open the schools for one day to run buses. Um, I mean, I really don't have an opinion one way or the other. I, I mean, no, but most people do. So I, I kind of resign myself to the fact that I'm in the minority and that the committee <laughs> thinks. We call that Mrs. Hip and <laughs> commiserate with her. Mrs. Hip and I. 
What's well, your thoughts about the 23rd? About not we getting can never their win way. one. <laughs> yeah, I, it really doesn't matter to me either way on the 23rd. Um, Obviously, you know, there's a cost to opening the school on the 23rd, but if we don't do it then, we're just going to do it in June. So it's And you don't know if we're going to have a mild winter or not. Yeah. And I would say that most school districts will probably be closed, closed. on we're the closed. 23rd. We're closed. Well, as Easton goes, so there goes the go. Commonwealth. <laughs> <laughs> it's time for us, though. We don't start till after Labor Day. <laughs> so, I, so I guess my revised recommendation would be to open school on, uh, for staff on Monday, August 26th, for students Wednesday, August 28th, no school on f Friday, on the Friday before Labor Day, no classes. So students would go to school two days, no school on December 23rd, and classes resume January 2nd. Does anybody want to make that motion? I'll make the motion. Motion by Ms. Peters. Anybody want to second that? I'll second. Second by Ms. Lanner. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, unanimous. Could you just oppose? I will um, put together with the administration um, <laughs> a list of the conferences and <coughs> open houses, so we'll have that early for families. <coughs> could you just post the um, results, maybe on Facebook, so that people we know could do that, that they voted for? Yeah, there was kind of a high turnout for a poll when you think of it. Okay, yeah. uh, moving right along in the agenda, we're on to uh, new new business. Does anybody have any new business, Eric? New uh, business at all? No. Michelle? No. Yep. Uh, Marianne? Stephanie, I have uh, one piece of new business just to announce. Um, the meeting for uh, February 11th will be canceled. So we'll, uh, we'll cancel that meeting, and I don't know when the next meeting is after that, probably after the 28th. 28th? Yeah. 28th? I, I believe. Yeah, yeah, it's when we get back from uh, February break. So that's my one announcement. Uh, I have one piece of new business. Um, this morning, Police Chief Richard Billings and I attended a joint conference it was sponsored by the Massachusetts Association of School Superintendents and the Massachusetts Association of School Business Officials. And districts were invited to send their superintendent, the chief of police, and school business managers to um, a seminar on school safety and learning about current trends in school safety. So the police chief and I will have some follow-up discussions, and we plan to um, meet with the fire chief also for his input. I know we had lockdowns last we week. We did. Can we had a lockdown in each school last week, and they all went well. We've been getting so many emails on um, discussions about arming teachers. <laughs> it, it's it's really scary to, to read what the different opinions are on all of this. Arming teachers in school. Uh, that would not be my recommendation. No, I can't even I can't even fathom mm -hmm. that. I, there was a town, and I think I sent Dr. Terrell. It was uh, mm. they're going to give the custodians the guns in the school. The school board voted to give them to them. But, but, but there's quite a bit of discussion as to whether the lockdown procedure, and this is what we'll have to look at, is enough. In addition to locking down a classroom, should the students be trained to put desks in front of the door, so to lock down and barricade? So there are other steps that. Um, those in law enforcement and safety are looking at and we'll be in those discussions and if we need to make modifications after we relook at what we're doing, we'll do so. And I'll keep the committee informed. And but I, you uh, have to look at doors and whether doors open in or out. I was all open in. I had a uh, couple of comments, uh, uh, Kelly. Wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> I'll hold back on that one. <laughs> no, I think uh, on the uh, doors, uh, a couple things. Um, in Easton, one of the uh, police officers was saying to use a door stopper, like yes. those little rubber door stoppers. And then even though the person may be able to get the doorknob open, they may not be able to right. push the door right. open because you have a door stopper yeah. there. And they're just like those little rubber right. $5 uh, things. That was uh, one of the things yeah. that was discussed. In addition to locking the classroom door to put one of the rubber door yeah. stoppers, then just slide a desk exactly. uh, in front of it. So and then the other, the other thing was these uh, things are called magnets, and you put them on the door. So instead of fumbling around to lock the door, the key, you just don't even have the key. You just uh, hit the magnet, and it automatically locks the doors. Oh, it's I'm like not a new with that. It's, like, yeah. it's not really high-end technology. It's just a magnet. Hmm? And then the other thing, just to kind of ask you, so in Hull, do we have we have the lockdown, obviously. But mm. then you are you guys using like different uh, modes of lockdowns, like like Alice? No. No, like uh, shelter in place. Those are the ones that oh. we have. And um, shelter in place would be like if you had a uh, tornado coming in, you didn't have enough time to get the students. Um, you didn't have enough time to really 
uh, lock all the doors, you just say we're in shelter in place. That means a tornado's coming out. Shelter in place would be if you have a medical emergency in the hallway. That way all the teachers and students would know they stay inside their classroom, they don't go in the hallway because there may be something going on. Then you have obviously the lockdown, which is like the normal uh, type of thing that we're all familiar with. Then you may have a lockout where you may have a bank robber that's in the area, or there may be a house that was robbed, or something going on inside. So that way when you call it in to 911, uh, the police or the fire would know that we're in a lockout mode. So everybody's using the same type of language. So instead of having, um, you know, I call up and say, oh, we're having a lockout, and then the police show up with guns. Well, it may really not need guns. It may just need to be a lockout situation. So there's different common uh, language that a lot of police and fire departments are using. And I know the five that I heard about were um, the uh, shelter in place, fire drill, obviously, evacuation, lockout, and lockdown. So, no, I, well, I haven't. But it's something you guys might want to discuss yeah. with the fire. No, we please, should. Because um, I know in my the district I work in, um, we're trying to get the teachers, fire, and police all on the same pa page, and we're trying to use those five terms so that when people hear shelter in place, they know exactly what they have to do. If they hear lockdown, right. it's a whole different situation, and obviously the police come in with more force with a lockdown versus a lockout or whatever. Yeah. And they, they are now saying that the person who is able to report the incident over the public address system should give the occupants of the building, the staff and students, as much information as possible. Um, so, heaven forbid, if something were to happen here, the occupants of the building would know what, what was going on. Right. That's what we, we and not to kind of hmm. label this whole thing, but I know like in our district, one of, that was exactly what we hmm. talked about was that um, if you hear those, those phrases, those different modes, if you hear lockout, well, there may not be enough time to get into a lot of detail, but if the students and teachers hear lock, right. lock down or whatever, then they know exactly what to do versus you know saying, oh, well, pull the curtains, lock the doors. I mean, you may not have time for that. And, and some uh, school districts are exploring whether there should be an evacuation, and then law enforcement, some law enforcement people have concerns that you'd be evacuating toward the yeah. incident. Pretty scary that we have to even talk about this stuff. That's but terrible. Think it's terrible. So I did want to keep the committee informed on that. Thank you. Good. Excellent. Okay, moving on in the agenda, um, we have uh, school committee policy issues. Uh, policy issue F, which is uh, facilities development first reading. Uh, FA, which is facilities development goals. FB, which is facilities planning. FCB, which is retirement of facilities. FEA, which is educational specification for construction. FEE, which is site acquisition, acquisition procedure. And FF, which is honoring individuals with school within school facilities. So, does anybody want to make a motion for those three readings? This is our first reading, I believe. Yes, okay. first reading. I'll make a motion. Motion by Ms. Okay. Peters. Do we have a second to? Is there a discussion? Ms. Peters, any discussion? No? I'll second. All right. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed, none. Uh, old business. Do we have any uh, updates from subcommittees at all? They had the uh, the planning committee. Uh, what's it? Not the planning. What's it? The uh, capital plan. capital planning committee uh, met a couple weeks ago, and uh, they went over all the various uh, plans for all the other departments. I think we're going to get scheduled at some point. The school mm -hmm. department will have a separate one, but went pretty well. It was on a Saturday. It was at the senior center. Uh, a lot of good information. Uh, so we'll see how it all works out. Any other uh, updates on any committees? Did we have a negotiation with the teachers association about the uh, new uh, teacher evaluation. evaluation. Tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay. Uh, any donations today, Maggie? No. no donations. Approval of warrants. We have uh, a couple of uh, warrants sitting here. Um, we have warrant number 17S and 411. And then we also have to approve, I guess we already uh, signed off on these warrants, but we need to make a motion to approve 16S, 409, and 410, I believe. They were from the last meeting? They were in between. Didn't have we're in between. Okay, all right, all right, okay. So does anybody want to make a motion to approve uh, those five warrants? Any, or any discussion about those? I'll, I'll make a motion. All right, Ms. Saad has a motion on the table to approve all five warrants. Do I have a second for that? I'll second. Second by Ms. Lanner. All those in favor say aye. 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 Unanimous. We like that. All right, correspondence to and comments from school committee. Anybody have any 
comments? Uh, Ms. Peters? Nope. Ms. Hart? Nope. Ms. Lynn? Mr. Hart? I mean, nope. Mr. Uh, Hip? Mr. Hart. <laughs> <laughs> That's how trouble starts. <laughs> I knew it was in the H. <laughs> <laughs> All right. No, uh, no correspondence. Uh, I don't believe we have uh, any need for executive session, so uh, at this point we'll adjourn the meeting, and the next meeting will be February 28th. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Uh, Ms. Peters? Yeah, I'll make the motion. Okay. I'll second it. Second. All, those in favor. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed? Good night, everybody. Good night. Thank you. I love this. Um, we get to take home the I didn't think I was going to like it. <laughs> I, yeah. I like it. I always like to like sing. I'm going to like it next time. I know. Oh. I just need to have. Um,